Apologies for not being able to bring back the original narrator for the channel yet. I'm not exactly sure what's causing the issue. I've tried everything I can to get things back to normal, but nothing's worked so far. I hope you don't mind me using this narrator in the meantime. Thanks for your patience. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. There is an 1891 book titled The Dwarfs of Mount Atlas by R.G. Halliburton. It tells of a race of dwarves in the Atlas Mountains of southern Morocco, alive and well in the late 1800s. The mysterious semi-subterranean gold mining race had already gone extinct in other parts of the world by this time. But in Morocco, they were still tribes in the hundreds, sometimes thousands, freely moving around. The book illustrates the author's travels, interviews with more than 60 direct witnesses, and his own encounters with the little folk. They are described as intelligent and athletic, working as smiths, tinkers, well sinkers, makers of leather, acrobats, fortune tellers, diviners, astrologists, jugglers, workers in silver and brass, dressmakers and cave miners. Tinker is an old word for tinsmith or a person who fixes small items. In our culture, it's also a slang word for a mischievous and impish child. They dug and built small dwellings directly into mountains inside which they lived and worked. Some lived outside of or near mountains, but their prime enclaves were subterranean. In the 1800s, Morocco was ruled by the Moors Maori, the Muslim people of North Africa. Dwarves traveled to the towns of the Moors in caravans to attend their fairs and markets. They sold crafts, spindles, spinning wheels, and performed acrobatic shows. At around the same period of time, dwarves were used worldwide in circus shows. This is possibly owed to the fact that they were known to be very agile and not prone to injury, apart from being a rare and nearly extinct people. The dwarves were also said to hide and guard ancient treasures buried below ruins. Their main foods were milk and camel's meat. When they traveled, they carried goatskin pouches of ground camel meat with them. The meat is pounded and salted, and a small handful sustained one person for two days. From the Atlas Mountains and Sioux region of Morocco, they traveled to Marrakesh, Fez and the adjoining Sahara Desert for their trade. When festivities were organized by the government, they deployed groups of dwarves for performances. Because they were already reclusive in the late 1880s, their presence was rare in northern Morocco, and so they were employed as novelty entertainment. Multiple witnesses of the time say that they were skilled at hunting ostriches. They sold ostrich eggs and feathers to Arab and Berber traders of the Sahara and markets in Moroccan towns. The adults were said to be four feet tall at most, but muscular. They had a reddish skin that differed greatly from the Berbers, Moors, whites, and black Africans sharing the region with them. Their skin was compared to the red Indians of the Americas. Their color also called slightly roasted coffee and mahogany. Some of them were said to be brown or yellowish and their faces were broad, often without eyebrows. They had short woolly hair, and their faces were usually shaved. Strangely enough, some of their tribes were dressed like the French. They wore woolen shirts embroidered at the front and back neck. They had leather boots or leggings coming up nearly to the knees, and their knives and daggers had a peculiar crescent-shaped handle. Today, any trace of them has disappeared, and the Atlas Mountains and deserts are mostly populated by the Berber people. What happened? Did they retreat back into their subterranean realm? Was there a quiet genocide? I've previously shown how the giants of ancient legend were still here more recently than generally believed. The same thing applies to dwarves. They were with us as recent as the late 1800s. That's only 140 years ago. Because of that, you'd think more information on them is available, but knowledge of them has all but disappeared. According to the 1891 book, all people agreed that they were the dwarves or the most ancient among all the cultures and tribes. Pre-flood, pre-cataclysm, pre-reset. The names given to them vary from town to town. I extracted all names given to them from the book. They are given by Moors, Blacks, Arabs, Berbers, and some by the dwarves themselves. The author doesn't bother to analyze most of the names, but I'm doing it because linguistics always prove revealing. Little Heratine, Little Hartania, Little Hardani. This appears to link the dwarves to the ethnic group of the Haran. In Mauritania, 
These are a distinct ethnic group. In Morocco, they are also distinct but lumped in with Berbers. To me, this seems like an inaccurate name for the dwarves. They may have mixed with the Hardani, but they are ethnically distinct from them in many ways. But it does remind me of an Arabic word called Harathim, which means diggers. Haida, Hayden, Hedden. Hayden is the ancient and modern German for pagans. Some sources say that in the old days, the entire region of North Africa was called Hedden. In Arabic, the word Hade refers to coming out of a mountain. In ancient days long gone, paganism was often associated with coming out of mountains because their rites were often performed inside caves. Hazura. This name for the dwarves is interesting. In the Bible, it refers to an enclosure, a fortification, or the stronghold of Canaanites in the mountains. The Canaanites were said to be idol worshippers that practiced taboo sex acts, child sacrifice to their gods, etc. They worshipped Baal. Moses' successor Joshua led a war against the Canaanites. This will become relevant further down. Patiki, Pata Patti. The book says this likely means father, Pata, Patti, and it's plural Patiki. I agree. Baraka, or Sidi Barakar. The word means blessing and tribe of blessings and divine blessings across various languages, including Arabic and Hindu. The dwarves have often been called the blessed tribe or sons of the blessed. Olad Mebrak. The word Olad means people or tribe and also town. The word Mebrak, I believe, is actually the Arabic word Mabruk, which again means blessed. Igwilmum. This name could be a reference to what in Berber language is called Aguelmum, a city in southern Morocco, today called Gelmum. Tawada, Ayusa, Idol, Adusal, Ruhar, Aglimat. Unfortunately, I was unable to decipher those names at the time of this writing. Akas, Wakas, Eitwaka. Aka is ancient German for land and Waka is ancient German for vehicle and was a common word in pre-flood times. Used for tribes, ships, boats, and aircraft. Tata. This probably again refers to forefathers. Tajikit. Wikipedia says that this is a mostly extinct tribe of Berbers who spoke Arabic. It's probably an inaccurate label for the dwarves. Nazigan. Likely named after the old Moroccan town Nezieg. Jed Jedi. This means father of our fathers. Yes. The movie Star Wars references a famous dwarf who is also a Jedi. Adada. The word Eight is a Berber term meaning people of or descendant of. Ada could refer to father or to Atlantis. It also means gift in Arabic and Persian. People of the gift is likely considering they were considered blessed. Imini. This is said to mean short people and it appears to derive from the Latin word mini. It could also be related to the river of the same name. Olad Sidi Hamed O Musa, or Sidi Hamed bin Musa. This is what some dwarf tribes called themselves. It means tribe of Lord Hamed, son of Moses. Why would they call themselves descendants of Moses' son? In the Torah, God doesn't choose Moses' sons for the priestly class, but rather his brother Aaron's sons. An uncharacteristic move. What's wrong with Moses' sons? Wasn't Moses one of God's favorites? The ancient scripture doesn't explain. Both of Moses' sons are said to have been born to wives from Midian, Arabia, rather than a Jewish wife. Was this the reason? The names of Moses' sons in the Torah are Gershom, his firstborn, and Eliezer. Eliezer means helper. Gershom means sojourner and stranger. Are these sojourners and strangers the dwarves? Amazingly, Akka, the place where most of the dwarves lived, seems to be the first place in Morocco that Jews migrated to. Why Akka? What were they looking for? The lost descendants of Moses? This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. I've split this into two or three parts because it was too long and I didn't want to take up too much of your time. If you find this video interesting, I look forward to seeing you in part two.